Hi friends, it's Aubrey. Today we are doing some pantry cooking. There will be a couple of desserts and meals that we did just from things that we had on hand. If you're interested to see what I came up with, keep watching. For tonight's dinner, we are going to do my mom's taco casserole. I'm gonna kind of make it my own style though because we don't have any refried beans. We're gonna use some black beans instead and I had some in the freezer and then a can. And the reason why we are doing this is because we have all these crumbs of tortilla chips and that will make the perfect like base and layer in the taco casserole. So we're gonna do that. Got some cheese out of my freezer as well as some ground beef that was already cooked. So we're gonna mix all of this together and I will take you along for the journey. It should be delicious. I also found a little bit of roasted corn that we had in the freezer from Trader Joe's. I found it when I was cleaning out my freezer in a few weeks ago's video. I'll go ahead and link that here if you are interested in watching how I organized and cleaned out my deep freezer and my freezer that's connected to my fridge. To my big skillet, I added my cooked ground beef if you need to cook yours, obviously cook it first. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a taco seasoning packet. You can definitely make it up with spices that you already have in your spice cabinet, which I have done many a time, but we're gonna just do the easy way and use the packet today. You're gonna sprinkle this in and then we're gonna add in about a half cup of water. And we're just gonna combine that together. Next, I'm adding in six ounces of tomato paste and three fourths cup of water. We're gonna give this all a good stir and get it well incorporated. Once it starts to thicken up, which mine is, we're gonna set this aside. And I will mention that I seasoned my ground beef with some salt and pepper when I cooked it initially, so that's why I'm not adding any additional here, but definitely make sure to season with salt and pepper as needed. In this pot, I have about two cans of black beans. You can definitely use refried beans instead. I'm just gonna mash these a little bit. Then I'm also adding in that fire roasted corn. I'm gonna mash these up a little bit with my potato masher, and then we will add in our salsa. And this is one, I believe, 12 ounce or 16 ounce jar of paste salsa. And I just blended it up because we don't really like the chunks. Well, I don't really like the chunks. So anyways, blending that up and putting it in. We're going to give all of this a good stir and then we're going to stir in some cheese. I just added in about a cup of cheese and it's cheddar cheese. You can use a Mexican blend if you prefer that. We're going to give this another good stir. I added about two cups of crushed tortilla chips to the bottom and, and now we're going to start layering in the other ingredients. I did grease my pan before I started adding things, forgot to mention that earlier, but I just added the beans, corn, and cheese salsa mixture to the top and now we're going to do another layer of chips and then we'll do our meat. Did some cheese for the top layer. If you like more cheese, definitely add more here. I'm gonna cover this with some aluminum foil and put it in a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes and then we'll do another five or so uncovered. Here is what the casserole looks like when it is all done. You can top this with sour cream, guacamole, hot sauce, cilantro, really whatever you would like. And it makes great leftovers. Today, I decided to make some of these strawberry banana cookies. My mom sent the recipe to me on Instagram Reels, and then I found the actual recipe, which I'll have linked down below. They looked super good, and they're a lower sugar, and they're gluten-free, and maybe a little bit better for you alternative to regular cookies. And so if that is something that you're looking for, these ones would be great if you are wanting a normal cookie. Just make normal cookies. They're not a sweet treat, really. They're kind of plain, but they are still good. So I wanted to show you guys how to make them. So first you'll take two ripe bananas and you'll put them in a bowl and mash them up. Sometimes I like to use my food processor or even my mixer to really mash them. But today I just used a fork. 
Next, you'll add in a half cup of peanut butter. You can also use almond butter or really any nut or seed butter, depending on if you have allergies or if you just prefer one or the other. So go ahead and add a half cup of that into the bowl. I did heat mine up just a little bit so that way it would easily come out of the scooper and I could get everything into the bowl. Next, I added in two cups of rolled oats, and if I were going to make this recipe again, I would stir the peanut butter and the banana together before adding the oats, just so that way everything was well combined and you get the peanut butter and the banana over all of the oats. Once those ingredients were nice and combined, I added in the rest of my chocolate chips. The recipe calls for about a fourth cup of chocolate chips and it was maybe just a little bit more than that. So we dumped those in there. I set my bowl to the side and washed and cut up my strawberries. They recommend using about a fourth cup of strawberries. I probably had quite a bit more than that, but that's okay. I got some as a snack for me and for the toddler, and then what we didn't eat, we put into the cookies. I gave the batter one more quick stir to incorporate the strawberries, and then I got out my cookie sheet, and I love these silicone mats. My in-laws got them for me for Christmas and they are one of my most used kitchen tools when I'm baking, especially with cookies. So I'll go ahead and have those linked down below, but I'm just going to scoop the cookies onto the liner and then we'll pop those into the oven. Make sure to press the cookie dough down that way it evenly cooks and then you'll bake it in the oven preheated to 350 degrees for about 12 minutes. Like I said earlier, these are a good cookie alternative that aren't very sweet. You could definitely do them for breakfast with some yogurt and kind of crunch it up in there. It would be really good that way, but I would probably make these again. They're pretty good. All right, so for dinner today, I found two tilapia fillets in the freezer, so we're going to make these along with a huge pan of roasted veggies. We have some cauliflower, broccoli, carrots, potatoes, and onions that have just been sitting around needing to get used. Let's chop all of these up, get it seasoned, and put into the oven. I chopped up the carrots and potatoes, seasoned them, and then putting them in the oven for about 10 minutes while we chop the rest of the veggies. I did the same seasoning on the potatoes and the carrots, but for this I did some oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and then some Italian seasoning. I'm just going to stir this together. It's really hard to do one-handed, so we'll stir it and then add it to our baking sheet. I'm going to put these in the oven for probably like 12 minutes, and then we'll go ahead and check them to see if they are cooked. And while these are cooking, I'm going to get the fish ready, and then we'll pop those in the oven for about 10 minutes. I seasoned the tilapia the same as the veggies, and then I just added a little pat of butter on each of the fillets and then I bake those in a 425 degree oven for about 10 or so minutes until the internal temperature was 145 degrees and then we just dish it up. I love simple meals like this. We were having some friends over to play games. We do this quite often and so I'll make a lot of treats or they'll bring a treat so today decided to make some cake mix cookies for the occasion. So you'll add two eggs and then the cake mix to your mixer. You can also use a hand mixer or just use a spoon. And then you'll mix this and then you will slowly stir in your half cup of melted butter. That way the eggs do not get cooked by the warm butter. I mix this for probably 30 seconds to a minute just until everything looks like it's well incorporated. And then I put it in the fridge for about 10 minutes just so that way it could firm up and make it a little bit easier to scoop. After the dough was firm, I got out my cookie sheet with some parchment paper. I sprayed it. You could also use some of the cookie sheet liners like the silicone kinds that I showed earlier for easy cleanup and so that the cookies come off a lot easier. And then you'll bake this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. I'm gonna make some frosting to go on the cookies and then we're gonna do some strawberries on top as well. So I have half a thing of cream cheese, half a stick of butter, some vanilla, and we're gonna do two cups of powdered sugar. Just mix it all in my mixer. I took my softened butter and softened cream cheese, put it into my mixer, and let this mix for about 30 seconds to a minute until they were well combined. 
I added in about a teaspoon of vanilla, but you can measure it with your heart. And then after that, I slowly added in the two cups of powdered sugar, about a half cup at a time, just so it didn't make a huge mess. Once the frosting was done, I cut up some strawberries and we made kind of a knockoff strawberry shortcake, but on a cookie. And they were super delicious. I will definitely be making these again. Would it be one of my videos if I didn't show you another variety of a quinoa and veggie bowl? I don't think so. I got my quinoa cooking in my rice cooker. I chopped up all of my veggies, put them in a bowl with some olive oil, salt, and pepper. We also have this half used um, spice from a meal box kit. So we're gonna use the rest of this and just some salt and pepper. Olive oil, we got cauliflower, red onions, carrots, and the chickpeas in here. So once we get that all stirred together, we'll get it roasting. I'm also gonna add some garlic powder, onion powder, and some cumin, because there was not as much in that spice packet as I thought. I gave the veggies a good stir to make sure all of the spices were on all of the veggie pieces. And then I poured this onto a sprayed cookie sheet and put it in the oven at 425 degrees for about 20 minutes. And then I normally rotate them and stir them throughout just to make sure they're all getting evenly cooked. For the sauce, we're gonna use some sour cream. I have half a lemon that needs to get used. We have a little bit of cumin left, some salt and pepper, and just stir it up. And if I need more liquid, I have some lime juice that we could throw in. There is something about fresh lemon and lime juice that just really takes the sauce over the top. The jarred stuff, or the kind you get in like the squeezy bottles at the store is fine, but the fresh stuff is just so much better. I just put a little bit of cumin and salt and pepper in here, and we'll just stir it up, and we'll get ready to serve. Here are all the roasted veggies and the chickpeas. Once the quinoa is done, we'll go ahead and plate this up with our sauce and some feta. This is gonna be delicious. And here's the completed dish. This is one of our absolute favorites. If you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend. For dinner tonight, we have a ton of tortilla chips, cheese, meat, and beans. So we're going to make some sheet pan nachos. I'm going to season the beans with some cumin, onion powder, garlic powder, maybe a little bit of salt. Whoop. And then same thing with the meat. I don't have a taco seasoning packet, so we'll heat this up in the microwave or you can heat it up in some warm water. And then we'll season it with my homemade recipe for taco seasoning. So I'll leave that link down below. Then we'll top it with some cheese, bake it in the oven for a little bit. Let's get cooking. I really like making these sheet pan nachos with Doritos. I feel like it just adds a little bit of something extra, but I didn't have any of those. So we're just gonna use the Juanitas. I put those onto my cookie sheet, topped it with some cheese, and then I heated up my beans. I seasoned these with some garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper, and cumin, and a little bit of chili powder. Stirred that, and then I also used the same seasoning for the meat. I added a little bit of water to my meat and popped it in the microwave and just stirred it until the seasoning was covering all of the meat, so that way everything had a little bit of that delicious spice blend on it. Once the meat and the beans were ready to go, I just layered them on top of the nachos and then I added some additional cheese on top. You can also add other things to this if you like olives or peppers, you could add those here or anything else that you would like warmed. And then you'll pop this into a 350 degree oven for about five minutes. This is one of those things that you really need to keep an eye on, otherwise it will burn. So definitely stay nearby your oven. And then you can top it with any cold toppings like guacamole, sour cream, some salsa, hot sauce, and these are super easy and delicious dinner. Everyone loved it and this is a really good dinner idea to just keep in your back pocket for those busy nights since this one comes together so quickly. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you did enjoy. I do a lot of pantry cooking on my channel. So if that interests you, definitely hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you here and I hope you have the best rest of your day. Bye.